God is good. Praise the Lord. God is good. I'm so thankful. I am so thankful. Praise God. I think about what God's put in my hand. I think about what God has given me to do. And I think about what God's got me through. And I think about what God's blessed me with. And then I wonder about what God has protected me from. And I think about the things that I may never know about. You know, that his mighty hand has, has prevented. And I think about all those things. And it's like, here I am tonight. And here we are tonight. And we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It, it, it brings joy to my soul. It does. Because we are connected to the great I am. We are connected to the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. We are connected to the Alpha and Omega. We are connected, praise the Lord, that line of Judah. Hallelujah. We're, <clears throat> boy, just feel the Lord tonight. And uh, again, thank you for being here. We got the church on Sunday, and uh, Common Ground will be here Sunday night. If you haven't seen Common Ground, you'll like those guys. Um, they'll be here Sunday night at 6. So it'll be a blessing. So please come if you can. Keep us in your prayers if you can't make it. Um, got prayer requests. Please remember my dear Sarah under the weather tonight. Please uh, remember John and Morgan couldn't make it tonight. Ask the prayers for them. Um, remember Miss Donna. She's usually here missing her. Ask the prayers for her. Um, remember the Blaze family, Martha and all them. Remember the kids. Um, had a good bunch, good bunch of kids this Sunday. And, uh, you know, sometimes you know about the backstories on some of these kids. And sometimes you know things that, you know, your heart just kind of breaks at times. Knowing that some of these circumstances that these kids are involved in. And, uh, you know, we need to be a light. We need to be, you know, shine, share, and love. Um, thank the Lord. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> we're going to repack the boxes that, uh, the house is uh, covered up with the boxes we prayed for and prayed over for the uh, shoe box, uh, the Samaritan first shoe box thing, and we're going to get those delivered out uh, probably Saturday and everything. And uh, but just you know, pray for that ministry and that's a blessing. Um, now, where do those shoe boxes go? Because I know a lot of churches, you know, they they go different right. areas. Where, where do Most of them go overseas. Most of them do go overseas. I would say most of them go to Africa. I don't know exactly where they go to, but I know most of them are going to your third world yeah. countries where these kids ain't got nothing. Right. I mean, next to nothing right. and everything. And <clears throat> I, uh, you know, when you send out a blessing like that, you know, it's like that goes back to that. It might not mean a whole lot to us. These Could you imagine they're whatever. probably already so excited over right. there? Knowing those Christmas boxes or shoe boxes yeah, were coming, you know. Yeah. And you change a life and give people hope and so and that's a blessing. And I know they put a I I know I think they put a a Bible, it might be just a New Testament. I know they put they put scripture in the book about the box each box. It's got scripture. So and uh, so pray for that. Pray for all the churches. You know, shine a light. I know uh uh Chestnut Grove. They have a Bible. The third, December 3rd through the 6th. Asking prayers for them. Charlie came out Sunday night. It's good to see me with Brother Ben. Um, anybody else got a prayer request? Spoken, a, spoken prayer request this week. All my family. Yeah. Oh, always. Always pray for our families. Yes. And I know you like that ALL, so, and I know y'all yeah. don't know, but <laughs> I mean all my family, my kids, my grandkids. Sure. All my family. That's it. Pray for them. That's right. Get them all in. That's right. Yeah. Mom, everybody, brothers, everybody. Amen. Amen. Pray for uh, service tonight. Um, pray for the lost. Time's drawing nigh. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're one step from return. Everybody. So. Can you pray for the homeless? Because there's, there's several states that's already seen the snow. Yeah. Pray for the homeless, those who don't have. It's, uh, it's a hard time. Pray, you know, and we need to really support each other with prayers and extra kindness during the holidays. I know that can be a 
um, hard situation. We've all, well, probably either have family that have passed on or family we don't get to see much for various reasons, whether it be distance or whatever, and uh, that can be a struggle. So uh, let's remember each other during the holidays. Anybody else? Any unspoken this evening? Well, let's go, Lord, prayer on this wonderful evening. And uh, pray with us. Come to Arthur Hill. Pray there. And let's go, Lord, prayer this evening. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord. One more time, one more opportunity to come worship your name. You're good to us, Jesus. Lord God, I ask you tonight, Lord, bless all these things, Lord God. Bless the prayer requests. Bless the spoken and unspoken. Lord, there is such a huge need, Lord God, for your loving salvation, your endless grace. Lord God, boundless mercies, Lord Jesus. Lord, just plead, Lord Jesus, over our family and friends, Lord, over our town, county, nation, state. Lord God, Lord, we need you, Jesus. We need you, Lord God. God, ask for healing, ask for comfort, ask for direction and guidance, ask for joy, ask for mercy again, Lord, and help us, God, to go forward. Thank you, Lord, for provision, and thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. God, again, ask you, Lord, bless the service. Let everything be uplifting and glorifying to you, holy name, Lord Jesus. You and you alone, Lord God, deserve praise, Lord. You and you alone, only one righteous. You and you alone, only one Jesus, Lord, deserving worship. Lord, you're holy, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Lord, bless us, Lord God. And again, thank you for this time. In thy name, amen. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter there, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on, I feel like traveling on. But when 
sing and shout for the glory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Amen. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toes of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all seem a little personal but uh, what what do you smell like <laughs> what do you smell like that's the question and you know you're not about the company you keep if I hang around good folks I'm probably a good folk if I'm hanging around a bunch of scoundrels I'm probably a scoundrel all right if I'm hanging around a bunch of people that like drama I'm probably full of drama in myself okay you get around these people, if you stay around these people, and you dwell amongst them people, eventually you will be just like these folks. It's like farmers smell like a farm. Doctors smell like rubbing alcohol. Perfume curlers. You go to them, you go to them Hallmark stores. My goodness. Woo! Man. I smell like one of them big tots on prom night coming out of them places. <laughs> All kinds of beautified aromas. I'm like, I, I, I ain't made to smell like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's just not me. But, you know, what What you are, you're giving off to others. Okay? You are. There's people I see, you know, certain people that have got peace, they've got joy, they've got happiness. There's some people, they've got, you know, they can have a good spirit about them. They can be upbeat. They be optimistic. They can be happy and joyful. And there's some people, you know, it, it's the other way, you know. And it's like that old joke, and y'all have heard me tell this joke, but it's like, like that woman, she she's like, some days I wake up grumpy, and some days I let him sleep. All right. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? It's like you get you get a reputation for who you are and what you're known for. Okay, and we as Christians, we need to understand that what we have, if we're not giving off love and joy and peace and the scripture and his spirit, if we're not giving hope or light or love to those around us, we really need to examine ourselves. Why? You know? What, what, what is influencing me to the point where I can't be the Christian that I want to be? Um, I, I've told people this, that um, it, I, I'm, I'm at my worst at work. I know I am. I know I am. It's just dealing with the public and dealing with, you know, you get me outside of church, people are full of spirit, people that want to love Jesus, people want to talk about Jesus. That gets me, I, I feel at home, okay? You put somebody out in the world, and it's like, sometimes you just get tired of dealing with things. Sometimes you just, you know, it's that spirit, it's the enemy, it, it's darkness, it's people that deny Jesus, it's that whole scene. And, and that's why God gives us 
to honor God. And that's why God tells us to be, what does it say? It says to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Right. says that, okay? We have to really watch how we, because they're watching us, trust me. They're watching, okay? So ask yourself, what, what kind of smell am I giving off? What kind of aroma am I giving off? Uh, if we look tonight, we're going to be in John, the 10th chapter of John, and we're going to be in the 7th, we'll start the 7th verse. Uh, the 10th chapter of John, the 7th verse, and it says, Then Jesus, excuse me, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, yet man enter in. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, let's stop there for a second. Jesus is making a statement. He is clarifying who he is. He's the door, okay? Now, <laughs> we got... <laughs> We got this thing at work. This happened just uh, uh, yesterday. Um, they're putting up a new banner at work. Okay. And we were asking, wondering what the dimensions were for this banner. And somehow we got a hold of some information. And one of the banners was listed 30 feet by 30 feet. Okay. And me and my coworker got to laugh. It's like, if we hang that thing up front, we're going to have to have like a little doggy door or we're going to have to, you know, find some way to get in this place. You put a 30 by 30 foot banner in front of them, we ain't getting in the door, okay? We're going to have to find another way to get in, all right? See, going back to the scriptures, there is no other way to get in except Jesus. Jesus is very, very upfront about this. I am the door of the sheep. Okay? Hear that. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now, why sheep important? Because sheep need a shepherd. You see? And a shepherd is some, you know, I've seen many shows about this and I've heard many sermons about that. That sheep knows the shepherd's voice. Right. That sheep will not follow anybody but the shepherd. Okay? Thieves and robbers show up. Do you know how a thief and or a robber gets a sheep? They run that thing down. They steal. They attack. Okay? The sheep does not come to the thief. The sheep does not come to the robber. You see? If you're sheep, you're listening to the voice of the shepherd. You're not going to be intermingling with darkness. And the things are darkness. Okay? You're not going to be, because the aroma, you don't want to get off the aroma of a thief. You don't want to get off the aroma of a robber. You want to be like Jesus. You see? And Jesus is saying, I'm the door. And the thieves and the robbers, they'll never track his true children, the sheep. Never. Okay? There's something inside you. I'm not saying you ain't going to be tempted. I ain't saying you ain't going to fall. I ain't going to say you ain't going to fade away. I ain't going to say you'll never backslide. I ain't saying nothing like that. What I'm saying is, if you are the shepherd's sheep, he's got ownership. That goes back to being redeemed. Okay? We're bought with price. Okay? So if we're the shepherd's sheep, the thief and the robber, when the rubber meets the road, there's going to be something inside that sheep. I've got to get to the shepherd. Mm -hmm. I've got to get to the shepherd. And see, that's why false conversions, and that's why, you know, I, 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 it troubles my soul when people, they say the prayer and nothing changes in their life. And I'm like, really saved. You know, are they really, really born again? Did they truly repent? And you can tell the difference between the ones that get saved 
and the ones that are just playing around because you get saved, buddy. You stop doing and acting and being the way you used to be. There's a definite difference. Mm -hmm. There is a definite difference. And when you have a definite difference in your life, then you know the shepherd's voice. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I am the door by me, the ninth verse. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know what that means? Jerry, you know what that means tonight, brother? Jerry, it means we got access. If we can go in and out, we got access. This is the house of God. You're welcome to the house of God. You're welcome to come into this house. You're welcome to go out of this house. We meet on Sunday, Sunday night, Tuesdays. Y'all are invited. Come on in. It's time to go. See you next time. God bless you. You are invited and welcome to come in and out. It ain't so in every place, though. Uh-uh. No. No, 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 no. Let me, let me drive down to Raleigh and see if I can get into the governor's house. <laughs> that door got three locks on it. My goodness. Probably got some well-dressed fellas. Escort me off the property at the same time. <laughs> and by the way they escort me, I doubt they've been converted. <laughs> That's what my image is. Okay? That door shut. That's a shut door. You ain't getting in. You ain't invited. You ain't earned the privilege. And you ain't welcome. Door shut. What's Jesus say? I'm the door. By me, if any man entered in. Now, you got to enter. It didn't say, Jesus, by enter means I'm going to drag these people in. No. no. You enter in. That's you going through that door. You make a free will choice. The thing I love about Christianity, it is a free will choice. I'm going to stand before God one day and say, yes, Lord, I chose this path. Praise God. I chose salvation. Why? Because it was it was there. It was like, do you want to be forgiven of your sins? And there was something inside of me that was like, I want to be forgiven. I don't want to go to hell. I need and want Jesus in my life. I'm going to enter in that door. So when we enter in the door, what does he say? He shall be saved. And once you're saved, you go in and out and find pasture. Praise the Lord. Woo! You can go in the house and you can go out the house. Oh, my goodness. Got that beautiful field. What a beautiful land. What a beautiful place. You know what? You know why I think that is, James, that pasture? I think that pasture is walking in peace, or walking in joy, walking in hope. Walking in mercy, walking in grace. It's where we're abiding in. That's our pasture. You see? And Jesus is like, come through the door, you're saved. And then this walk, you come into God's house, you come into his spirit, you come into his presence, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of words for it, and they're not all the same. Trust me. I've been in his spirit probably. I felt the presence of God more outside of the church than I have inside of the church. And for that, I say hallelujah. Because if the only time I felt the presence of God was on a Sunday morning, a Sunday evening, or a Tuesday evening, I'd be hurt. Right. I'd be in a bad spot. Right. But, but boy, you'd be driving down the road and you just feel his presence on you. Or you be hearing a certain song, praise God, or texting or talking to a friend, or or you be sitting there, you be reading the scripture at home, or you be you, you hear a video, you see a video, you hear a song, or you know, you be out out public, and you see a brother or sister in Christ, and you and you just feel that spirit, and it's assurance, and it'll build your faith. Praise God. Praise God. 
I'm so thankful for that pasture. And it says in that 10th verse, the thief cometh not but to the, the steal. The thief cometh not but to steal, before to steal, and to kill and to destroy. Now hear what the thief's doing. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that they might, 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 might have life. Might. Free will choice. And that they might have it more abundantly. You know there's two levels there. You ever seen anybody saved and they just have the most miserable walk? <laughs> I mean, they just have the most, it's like, they just seem like they don't get it. They just don't get it. They want to hold on to their burdens. They want to hold on to the guilt. They want to hold on. They're listening to the wrong thing. And I'm not making fun of them. There's times I hang on to my doubts. There's times I hang on to my fears and things like that. I'm not making fun. I'm not mocking anybody. But sometimes I see people, and it's there, it's their day in and day out. So I don't doubt their salvation. What I doubt is that abundant life. You see, what it is, is if I've got more faith in that pew than I do in God, then whatever happens in that pew is going to determine who I am, how I act, the way I react. You see, I tell people that worry is simply having faith in fear. Whatever you fear the most is causing you to worry, causing you to panic, causing you to have these things. And you've decided, and we all do this. I'm not picking on anybody. We all do this. There's days I've got, I just, it's right there in my face. And it just seems like I can't get away from it. But God's telling us, come on back into the house. Come on back Put you, cast your cares on me. Lay them burdens down. Come unto me, I give you rest. He is our refuge. Praise God. He'll lift your head. Praise God. I did a whole sermon about your chin one time. I remember that. Where's your chin at? If you see people and their chin is down, okay, they can't help but be looking down. If your chin's down, you're going to walk into a wall. You ain't going to see things around you. Somebody comes up to you, you ain't going to see them. Well, you got that head up. You got some hope. You got some happiness. You got some pride in him and his spirit. You're proud to be a child of God. I ain't talking about pride in yourself. I'm talking about being proud of who he is and what's he made you. You got that chin up, buddy. You got that head lifted high. and You can see around you. Buddy, and, you, and you're ready for any and everything. And he'll lift your head. He'll lift your head. He'll lift your hands. Lord, I thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I got there today this very afternoon. And I was like, you need to stop what you're doing. And you need to go pray. I stopped what I did. And I went praying. And I felt good in my spirit. And it was later on that day. I remember I was going outside. I just threw my hands up. I said, thank you, Jesus. One more day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why? Old Tim's just in good with God. He's just such a mighty person. They ain't got nothing to do with it. All right? They ain't got a thing to do with it. It's he and he alone. And when you listen to the Lord, and when you, when you hear that still small voice, and you follow through with that still small voice, Woo! Good times, good things. Good things. <clears throat> you ever been outside in the winter? Be out shoveling snow or be out playing or just being out in the weather and you get real cold and like cold in your lungs and cold in your throat and you go inside and you drink something warm and you just feel that you just I mean you just feel it going all the way down you. You know? Just a really a little, a little hot cider, maybe, maybe that, that's non-alcohol. And that's uh get some hot chocolate, get some hot cocoa, right? Okay. 
you get something warm in you, and you just feel it. You're like, oh. and I, I, that's how the spirit. Now I, I don't know how spirit gets. I think spirit deal. I think it, I think it works differently for different folks. Yeah. I really do. But I tell you, sometimes Kim, it's like that. I just feel. I'm just like, oh. it's like you step in something different. It's like this is not of this world. And this is so above me. And what's so above me, Father What's so above me loves me and cares for me and has redeemed me and has called us to higher purpose and has called us to say, keep on going. Don't be weary in well-doing. Keep on going. Keep on. Keep on. The battle's not mine, said little David. Lord is thy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. We need to give him praise. I am a good shepherd. The eleventh verse. I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Praise God. I think about Easter. I think about Calvary. I think about his blood. I think about what he did to sacrifice. I think about what he gave up for you and I. And the whole time he was fulfilling prophecy and, so, and the whole time he was filling the, the, the word of God and the will of God and the Holy Father who sent him down. But he gave it up for us. And when you and I, hear me tonight, I've talked about this, Jerry, as far as time is concerned. You know, we talk about giving our life. And a lot of people, and I understand, especially when thinking of Christ, we think about the whole nine yards. We're thinking about life. We're talking last breath. We're talking lay down. You know, we had uh, Veterans Day recently. You know, we think about those guys and those gals that signed up, willing to go, willing to go to serve and protect our nation. You see, willing to lay down the life. They signed up for that. Think about the law enforcement folks. I think about the firefighter folks. I think about the emergency personnel. Mm -hmm. These people are signed up and they're willing to risk for the good of individuals and community. And look at this right here. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But Jay, I tell you what, sometimes I think it's about time. Anytime you've ever, I'm going to rearrange my whole schedule to pay attention and try to get you through this circumstance. I think in essence, you just laid down your life. Because right. you just rearranged your whole world, your whole schedule, try to help that one individual. Amen. And when you love someone like that, I see that in Christian church. I see that in Christian community all the time. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Yeah, I'll come by this. Yeah, I'll call you. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can help you out. I hook you up. It's all good. You're laying down your life. Why? Because the one that laid down his life for you is dwelling in you. And you want to be that good example, you see. You want to give off that aroma of Christ laid down his for you and I. So we can take time and we can lay down our stuff for others. It says in the 12th verse, but he that is a hireling, hireling. Hear that again. Again, the 11th verse, the good shepherd. He's telling you what the good shepherd does. He, the good shepherd gives the life. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd who own the sheep or not, see the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. A hireling. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I've been doing some traveling recently, and uh, I've, I've rented a couple of cars. And when I think about renting cars, there was a trip uh, that happened. Um, I think it's 2018, and we had a passenger van. Okay, more or less, it was a small passenger van, but it fit like 10 people. All right, and I rented this thing. All right, and I'm driving up New York, that place where me and brother just went a few weeks ago. All right, we're going up 81. And due to whatever reason, we got a real late start. It got it was about midnight. We still about an hour away. We're about midnight. 
I missed Max. I'm looking on the map. It's like 15 miles to get to the next dash ramp. I'm like, oh, man, I don't do it. But you kid, you kid. All right. So any of y'all know Sarah or Josh, they'll verify this story because they were in that vehicle with me. Well, I'm driving through there, and I'm looking on the other side. There, that's the other side of the interstate right over there. Man, it looked, man, it looked like Poland and Ford. I mean, it was a war zone between the two interstates, okay? I mean, it was dirt. It was, it was land movers. It had been cleared out. There were dips and all that. But they were still, there were vehicles that were parked. In that, and I'm talking, it had to be five or six football feet across, driving between the two, the, the distance between the two roads. I looked at Josh, Josh was in the passenger side. I'm about to find me an exit. I took that van, I went off of that dirt, and I said, Lord bless this. And I'm driving, buddy. And that thing's hopping and humping. And I remember there was one spot I looked down and I know there was like a six foot gap. And I'm like, well, I'm going to miss that. <laughs> and I was playing a game of mouse trap, weaving and waving and getting over through there. And I got over on the other side and I turned that thing over. You know I would not have done that in a vehicle that I owned. <laughs> <laughs> but since that was something that I rented, <laughs> I was okay with that. Yeah, I was okay with that. Right? The verse is telling you the same thing. The hiring. If this is, if, the, if you just property, yeah, you know, I'll let that go. It'd be all right. I'll let that go. There's a wolf coming. Uh-uh. Better you than me. It's like that old joke. It's like you go out in the woods. It's like you don't have to outrun the bear. You just got to outrun the person you with. All right? All right. Uh huh. That's the hireling. And Jesus is warning people. You know who the hirelings are? That's the boss people. That's your social clubs. That's the people that are taking advantage of your time and keeping you from serving God. Now, I'm not saying you can't do clubs, and I'm not kind of elk, moose. I gotta be careful about what I say, club there, okay? <laughs> Jared go home, boy. Perkter said I can go to the club, Jenny. I see you later. I did not say that. <laughs> That's not what I said. Civic Club. There we go. The Quants, the Lions Club. Yeah. These organizations. Any organization or anything that you put before God, they're your hireling. Okay? That's where I'm getting. There's many good organizations out there. There's many good places out there. You can go serve. You can go be part of. I ain't preaching against it. But your own spouse, if you put them before God, you've already messed up. As a Christian, your own family, I see it all the time. I can't do this and this anymore because my family wants me to do this and that. Next thing you know, you never see them church again. Never see them church again. Well, I got this little side job. And, well, they want me to come by every now and then. And then all of a sudden, every now and then, is any time church doors open. You never see them again. And I think to myself, you just <coughs> got balled in by the hireling. And what does the hireling do? He ruins when, the, when, when there's trouble. Right. The hireling flee because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. What do I mean by not caring? He ain't willing to give a lie. You see, if you're willing to give to others, there's, there, there's a certain spirit of the Lord that's in that. When it's me and me alone and I'm out to do the best I can for myself and whatever happens to you is, oh well, that's a hireling. That's a hireling. The 14th verse, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Hear that. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. That's how you know you're saved. 
If you're curious about your salvation, that should tell you something. Because if you weren't curious at all, it wouldn't matter to you. I don't know any Christian that's never had doubts about salvation. You know why? Because the enemy wants you to doubt it. Your mind is enmity toward God. That flesh wants you to deny. Because the more time you spend serving God, the less time you're going to be keeping that flesh happy. Amen. And that flesh wants to be happy. And that flesh is not happy when you're walking that highway of holiness. That flesh is not happy. We're supposed to crucify the flesh. That's what the scripture tells us. You see, it says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Do you love me, Lord? Oh, yeah, praise God. He loves you. Lord, do you hear me? Oh, he'll make himself known. Praise the Lord. I saw the sweetest video today. I saw the sweetest video. There's this guy. He looked like he was about to hiccup from hunger, okay? I mean, this guy was old, all right? And he's in his kitchen, all right? And he's barely moving. He, he looks like me after preaching hard on Sunday. He's barely moving. And he gets there and he's in the kitchen. And he walks up, had to be his wife. And it's like, I want you to be my Valentine. Would you be my Valentine? And she spoke up. And she's like, Well, I've been your Valentine for 64 years. And they gave each other a little smooch. Oh. <laughs> it about melts your heart. <laughs> It about melts your heart watching that. You know why? Because they know each other. They got a relationship. You see, they built something on trust. They built something together. And you see, that's what God wants from us. God wants us to build a trust, a relationship. God wants us to build that day in and day out. He wants that. Yeah. And you say, Tim. Oh, I got work, I got family, I got friends, I got issues, I got this and I got that. You know the Creator knows what you got. Yeah. That's the thing about it. God already knows what you got. So he's like, come on, I already know that. I already know that. He, he's willing to hang out with you, spots and all. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, wrinkles and all, bumps and all. Hallelujah. He wants you. Why? Because if you're his, then you know his name. You know his call. You see? And if I want to spend time, I love you guys. If I want to spend time with y'all and get to know y'all and, 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 and get close to y'all and build a relationship, how much more so does Jesus, who gave all, want to build that same relationship? And he's like, if you'll come unto me, you'll be like me. You'll have that aroma. You'll have that attitude. You'll have that fragrance. You'll have that, that glow. You see, there'll be something different. You'll have a hope. You'll have a mercy. You'll have a faith. You'll have a trust. You'll have a strength. You'll have a love. There'll be something there. There'll be something there. Praise God. As the Father knoweth me, 15th verse. Got two more verses. <laughs> As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. What's he saying? He's saying, I'm going to follow the will of God. And if the will of God calls me to do whatever it is for the ones I love, for those that are saved, that's about to happen. And you see, God has put his spirit in us. You see, salvation shows up. There is a hope. There's an unction from the Holy One. There's something there. There's that river of living water. You know you can't have a river of living water without having a source. That water don't just show up. He's the source river a little water flowing out and he's like listen the father knows that I lay down my life praise God and let that water flow and let that spirit flow and let that love and that mercy and that joy and that hope and let that forgiveness let it flow through you let it roll through you praise God 
And the next thing you know, you got your mind on heavenly things. You got your hopes and your desires on things not of this world. Praise God. Actions that are not of this world. It's not normal in the eyes of the world to love those that mock and hate you. That ain't normal. It's not normal to, hey, I'm going to get up and go to church. I could be hanging out longer. I can go over here and eat dinner somewhere. I can just be doing whatever I want to do. No, I'm going to go to the house of God. In the eyes of the world, that's a little odd. But these things, you read your Bible, you get the good godly music on, you shut off the things of this world. You start seeking him. You know, if you talk to someone, it probably won't take long to know where they're at. I mean, it, it won't take long. And when you've got the spirit of God in you, it won't take them long to see that either. And that thing just starts shining in you. And it starts being a witness. 16th verse, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. What's he saying there? And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now you can take that a lot of directions. Is he talking about the Jews and the Gentiles? Is he talking about those that are saved and go on and go to the grave and those that are getting raptured on? Is he talking about? Is he talking about the backslider that has ran off and he's like, those are mine too, so I gotta go find. Them. You know, that's the beautiful thing in preaching. And that's the beautiful thing about the scripture. One way will feed you one day, one way will feed you another. And we can debate and we can talk about what this actually means. But what we should all agree on is the fact that he's patient and he's willing. Praise God. He's willing. Mm -hmm. You may not be on your best step. You may not be on fire for God. You may not be what you used to be. But he's like, I'm still, there's still mine I'm waiting on. Why? Because he's a good shepherd. And when you and I, when our lives are touched and blessed by the good shepherd, we're going to be like him. And we're going to give out that good aroma. That aroma of hope and love and forgiveness and eternal life. Mm -hmm. When the roll is cold up yonder, I'll be there. But Boy, I feel that. I feel that. But I'm looking forward to that grand glorious day. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're all going to be together forever. Praise the Lord. I hugged my wife tonight and I told her, I said, I love you. And I said, you know what? I love you forever because we're going to be together forever. Because we're born again. We're born to heaven. Hallelujah. I don't know what heaven's going to be like when we go over yonder. But praise God. If you're born again, you're getting in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just thankful tonight. Let's be like the good shepherd. Let's pray tonight.